today we are going to uh, reintroduce our component for Google Maps for putting um, map and geographic functionality into applications which are built in Servoy. Uh, this is not the first time we've done a webinar about uh, this particular feature. This is something quite common in a lot of our customers' applications. Uh, but uh, a couple colleagues of mine uh, recently updated this component because they had some customer requirements. And um, yeah, they, they, this is somewhat of a major release. And I think it warrants a webinar because uh, the functionality has been enhanced a lot and a few things have, have changed. Uh, so what we have in store today, uh, as you know, um, this is the 82nd uh, edition of the tech webinar series, and we always like to start with a demo so you could see stuff first. And then if you want to stick around, we'll go over what we just saw. And in today's demo, um, I'm going to show some of the uh, map marker properties uh, and events that, that we've exposed and, and kind of go over how, how the API has changed. So uh, then after that, we'll get to some overview of, of what's, what's new uh, and run through just a quick uh, batch of slides. So let's get to the demo. Uh, I'm going to uh, go over to something I have here uh, already in the browser, a very simple application that I built this morning. Um, there is a more comprehensive uh, sample solution that ships with the component. Uh, and I'll, towards the end of the webinar, I'll show you how to get to that. Uh, which really shows how to use every part of the component. Today, I'm just going to focus on what's new. Uh, so first of all, you can see that I have um, uh, some data. These are customers from the customer database, uh, or like sample database, um, the customer table. And on the map, you can see that there are markers for all the customers. Uh, if I do a search, say, France, uh, you can see that it zooms in on the um, uh, markers that uh, match on the search keyword France. Um, what I want to do is go into Servoy Developer and show how this is set up and show what was different about adding the markers to the map that's changed since the last release. So I'm coming into uh, Servoy Developer, our IDE, uh, looking at the form. You can see the search box, the grid, and the map component. And if I move my zoom controls that you can't see, I can get to the properties. Um, so you can see that uh, on on the map here we have uh, the properties, and and there are there is a property for markers, and so you can directly bind to a found set, um, and that's a one common way to do that. But I'm going to show you how to do it programmatically, uh, also using the new API for generating markers. So I'm going to come in here to the JavaScript file that is behind this form. And I've made a method here called set markers. And I'm going to go over this uh, a little bit line by line because uh, I did this so that it sets up some of the things that are new. Uh, so first of all, I clear all the markers from the map. Uh, and then I start looping over the records in the found set. Um, there's only about 90 of them in this case. Uh, so looping in this way makes sense. Um, one thing that I want to point out quickly, but we'll come back to it because it's a bit more um, uh, it's not one of the core topics, is that we, we did change the, uh, we deprecated latitude and longitude from the map marker uh, in favor of a property called position, which is really a, a little object that has a, a lat and a long uh, property. Um, some of the properties we deprecated are to bring it more in line really with the Google Maps marker class, so that if you're looking at how to do something in Google Maps and then you look at the API and Servoy, they're the same. Uh, uh, rather than, you know, put our own stuff in there. So uh, it's, it's more transparent to move between the two. Uh, so now there's a, a position instead of a, um, instead of a latitude and longitude as separate properties. Um, something that, that we've always had is the ability to put in an address and allow Google Maps a geocoder to, um, to geocode it uh, so that it can show up in, in the map. Um, something I've done here is if, if uh, I added to the, customers table, a lat and a long field. Uh, and if those exist, we use it, meaning that the record has already been geocoded. Otherwise, we'd pass in the address and allow Google Maps to geocode it. Later, I'll show you how we actually save that back out. This improves performance and gets around some of the limitations um, uh, for throttling when you're using uh, the geocoder API. Uh, so that's just one thing I want to point out, that, that now there's this property called position. Um, 
getting into uh, the marker itself, we now have um, an API called Create Marker, which returns the marker object that you can programmatically interact with. Um, it's a lot nicer than it used to be. Um, the things that are required are um, you can you can pass in a I don't know if it's required, but a uh, big thing now is you can pass in an ID, which seems simple enough, but it allows you to link it to the actual record that you're showing. Uh, so it's very important that you pass in that ID because later when you handle all these new events that I'm going to show you, you need to figure out, oh yeah, which record are we talking about? Uh, so we're going to come back to that marker ID. Uh, again, the position is, is also new and uh, tooltip was deprecated. It's now called, speaking of tooltip, I got to get rid of that tooltip. It's now called um, uh, title. And so I'm passing in the company name for title. So you can see over on the map um, as I hover over these, it's showing the names of the, of the companies in the tooltip. Pretty easy so far. Um, something else that you might have noticed is that there's a bit of animation that's been added. Uh, in this case, I use the drop. You get to use bounce or drop or nothing. Um, so animation is a new feature. Um, so you can see the pins kind of drop on the map. Uh, also opacity is um, something that was added. So you can add a value between zero and one to have a translucent marker. So I put these at about 50%. So if I change my search, I'll put in USA, enter. You can see the pins there. Um, I don't know how quick the, um, the refresh is through the, the meeting. I'll do it again. Put in Germany, and you can see the pins dropping on the map uh, when, when I recreate those markers. You also might notice that these are, are not really um, fully opaque. Um, in places where there's probably multiple markers in the same place, you can see they're a bit darker, but I'm using that opacity property, which is new. Um, another thing that uh, we now handle are uh, directly marker events. And in the overview, I'll go over all the events. There's actually quite a lot of events. We support anything that, that Google Maps has. We just expose those events as is. Uh, one of them could be a click event. So you can see that if I uh, click on San Francisco here, um, that it highlights the record in the list here. So I'm chain updating the selection. I also updated the animation so that now you can see the selected record is bouncing. Um, I can also do that vice versa if I start selecting records here in the grid. And you can see the record that I'm selecting is, is bouncing up and down. Um, Let's go back into the IDE and just see how we set that up. Uh, you can see that, um, uh, well, I've got to go first to the, the form design. You have to enable which events you're going to listen for. So that's step one. Um, so there's a new property here, marker events. And what you can do is you can click and, and add a, um, an event listener and then pick all of the exposed event, events there. There's, I think, a couple dozen events uh, that you can listen to. You can see in, in my example, I'm listening to click and um, double click um, for the, that should be drag. I think I accidentally changed that uh, drag end I want. We'll get, because that's for another example. That would have messed me up. Uh, so you can see that for the marker events, you add the events that you want to listen for. Uh, then what you need to do is, um, uh, over here, there's a on marker event, event, <laughs> which uh, kind of bundled those all together. And um, I've handled that here um, with the, um, uh, what it does is it passes in the event object and then you get the event type. So it's going to be one of those many uh, event types that you saw on the dropdown. Uh, in this case, I, I grabbed the type and I put it into a switch statement because there could be a lot and I check each case. So if the case was click, all I'm doing here is calling foundset.selectRecord, and this is where that marker ID comes back because uh, you saw that when I was creating the marker, I passed in the, the primary key of the record as the ID of the marker so that uh, when it comes back to me through the event, I can say, oh, I know which record was, select, was clicked on um, because they're linked with the ID, and then I select it back in the foundset that's linked to that grid. Uh, so that, that's how that you, when I, um, I should probably, um, I accidentally edited the map, so I'm relaunching the client. Uh, so you can see that um, 
when I oh, this is a I'm using a um, unreleased version of Servoy that I didn't update, and there's this little bug where I have to reactivate the solution because one of the modules gets disconnected, and I think this was already fixed. Just give me a second here. It wouldn't be a demo without stuff like this. And back to my uh, solution. Don't do demos with unreleased versions of your software. Okay. Uh, this should uh, hook it back up now. I'm going to. No. That's really weird. Evo, this is the part where you ask a really uh, interesting question yeah, to distract the, to to distract the audience. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, this, this happened uh, this morning, and I thought, oh, no, this is going to happen in the demo unless I don't modify the map, and I accidentally modified it when I uh, I should have just uh, hit undo. Um, let me try this one more, and then uh, it's just going to break the search. It's not a, It doesn't really affect the demo, um, but it's nice to be able to search and jump around and get a smaller subset. Um, I did have a question, Sean, when you selected uh, a record or a point on the map, a marker, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. can you select two or three and then oh, do things? Now you're coming with the hard questions. Uh, yeah, you can because uh, it handles, um, yeah, I didn't think of that. Why didn't I make that in the demo? Um, because you, you're really just handling the low level click event. So um, knowing that a marker was clicked is all you need to know. Uh, and Servoy supports a multi-select based found set. So in fact, um, you could pretty easily just add that to the set of selected indexes versus um, uh, just saying this is the selected record. That would be a one line code change versus the example that I'm, I'm having. We're gonna try the search one more time. Ah, geez, it's really weird. Um, okay, well, I'll, um, I should have updated uh, to I'm running on the nightly build, but then I, I didn't update for many, many days. So um, that's what's going on here. I think this was some issue that was fixed at uh, some point. Uh, anyway, um, we can do this a zoomed way out or uh, with all the records here. It's not a big deal. Uh, you already saw how the search was, was zooming in. Um, what I was getting at here is that if I, um, if I were to click one of these records, you can see that it, it calls back and that's, based on that marker ID that links them together. To your question, Evo, yeah, I could just, I could handle, um, I could handle um, a modifier on the click event, like a shift or a control mm -hmm. and, and find that out. And then I could, instead of set selected record, I could, or select record, I could, there's a method called set selected indexes and I could start to um, uh, build up a list of the selections. It would, it would be a more than one line of code. It'd be a couple lines of code uh, to do it. Um, the other way around was that I was, um, I was selecting, uh, uh, the record, uh, by, yeah, that also the, you can see how some of the pins redrop. It's because the, uh, I'm switching the, the animation and, and I think there's an issue switching it to none instead of drop. So I left it at switching it back to drop. So it redrops it, but you can see that as I click through the, um, record selection on the left here, it, it animates that. It also was changing the opacity. Uh, you can see that it, that's the other thing. So um, I wanted, there was one other side of this that I didn't show you, which was if we go back to the event, um, not the event uh, of the click, but the record selection event on the, on the form. So as you know, forms in Servoy are easily data bound. And so anytime that record selection happens in the grid or programmatically, I'm handling the event and I have uh, another method here, which is show selected record on map. Uh, and here I did a little bit of um, uh, work because I wanted to clear the selected, the previous selected record. So um, I stored that in a little form variable by ID. And here comes another um, uh, API that was added having to do with the marker ID for linking. Uh, you can get marker by ID. Uh, so when I got the marker, through the click event, I, I pull the ID to select the record. This is coming the other direction. Uh, the record has been selected. I grab the marker um, by ID using the, um, the uh, customer ID of the record, which you can see down here. Uh, so in this case, I'm actually removing what I had set. So I put the animation back to null 
and I put the opacity back to 50%, and then I clear the, uh, the variable. But the important stuff is down here uh, where I, um, I get the selected record of the found set, then I get the marker by ID for the record that's been selected, um, and then I change the animation to that bounce, and then I set the opacity to 100%, and then I store it in that, that variable. So just showing here how, um, again, it's linked by the record's primary key and handling an event on the map or in the data binding, in this case, the record selection, I can, I can interact with the markers through, through those new APIs. So that really gives you the full linkage between uh, data binding in, in the form and also what's happening on the map, and that's how I can go back and forth. Uh, something else that, <clears throat> uh, something else that I'm uh, able to do is um, handle dragging. Uh, so uh, suppose that I, um, I want to move uh, this marker here to another location and then record it. Uh, I could uh, click here and drag it, put it down, say, in Florida. And then it's going to say marker moved, uh, update this record's position. So I put a little notification to the user. I can click cancel. And, well, I had to refresh the map in this case, but I think that's uh, an issue we can get around. But uh, you can see it went back to, to where it was, or I can do it again, and I can click yes. And now it'll actually stay there. I wrote that back to the record. Um, we've had applications and use cases where users wanna, wanna actually edit on the map. They wanna be able to move um, uh, a feature to another location. You could reverse geocode it too and, and peg it to an address if you wanted to. Um, and uh, uh, so this kind of allows you to go, to go both ways. And um, you, can, you, know, you can interact with uh, the geographic feature and then record what you did back to the record. So I'll go back to the IDE. Um, again, if we go back to the map view and look at the properties, I handled in the marker events that drag end, and it goes back to that, that bundler event here on marker event. And um, this time I go to back to that switch statement that I showed before. Uh, you can see if the event was drag end, that means I'm, I'm done dragging. Um, what I do is I, um, I selected the record that was dragged and then I, um, I show this input. I probably could have put this first, uh, before doing anything, uh, where I ask the question to the user, minimize this. And then if the user, um, says yes, then, uh, or doesn't say yes, what I do is I revert it back to what was, um, on the record. I, I set that position property. And uh, in this case, I had to call, um, I don't know why that's there. Um, maybe that was causing an issue. Uh, I call um, uh, refresh on the map, but it should be that any time, because when I said opacity or animation, it seems to update immediately, but position for some reason, I had to call map refresh. So I think that's a small bug uh, that I'm gonna file after the webinar and, and we can look into, because you shouldn't have to call map refresh. In any event, um, I reset the, the position back to what was in the record if they, if they canceled, uh, and then I returned. But if they, if they did accept it, then I'm writing it to the record, and you can see, again, I'm using that position property here, and I write it uh, right to the selected record of the found set, and I save it. Of course, there could be some other process going on here, but if I actually uh, close the client and reopen, um, and uh, you would see that 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 marker would still be in Florida uh, even after the client session ended because it was it was fully persistent. And I'm going to check one more time if I got rid of that issue with the searching. Yeah, this time it worked. Okay, it should be back in Florida. It's not there. I don't know what happened. Uh, I went off script a bit there, um, but uh, I don't think it was in. Maybe it wasn't in the USA. Nope. Um, I thought maybe it was Canadian. Uh, not sure what happened there, uh, but uh, I was checking this before. It was writing it back to the record, but you get the idea um, that basically you handle the drag event and then you can update the record. Uh, you could also do this to click and, and add new features to the map handling the click event. It's really up to you because you have full programmatic control. Um, let me think here. There was something else I need to show you um, one thing that um, 
that I, I mentioned earlier was uh, when I was making the markers, uh, you could see that I, I said, if the lat long exists in the record, use it. Otherwise, geocode the address. Uh, I have to um, come clean here. I cheated and I geocoded all of these uh, before the webinar because um, uh, there's a bit of a performance. If you're geocoding too quickly, then the Google API will tell you you're, you're um, exceeding the limits and you'll start to slow, you have to slow down artificially and it makes for a, um, a bad demo. So I did cheat and do that in advance uh, and then store those on the record. But this would be a best practice anyway, because you wouldn't want your user to have that experience too. So uh, what you can do is sort of geocode um, uh, records that you have and, and, and then store it so that it's uh, much faster. You can see those pins drop really quickly. There's no calculating. But I want to show you uh, an event that was added to help you handle this. If you look at the properties of the map, you can see that there's yet another new um, event that was added on marker geocoded. And I added a handler for that. It passes in the marker object and um, the new position, um, which is also the same as the marker position. Ah, these two clips. Uh, so what you can see is, uh, again, I used that marker ID property to find the record. Uh, and then if I find it, I'm just editing that record and updating it with what was returned in the geocode or what was assigned back to the marker. I could have also used this lat long object to, to, um, uh, to grab that position. Uh, and then I write that back into the record so that when I'm going back to the set markers method where I'm first creating those, uh, it's going to say, yeah, record dot lat does exist. So I'm going to use it. So I get a bit of that, that performance improvement. But the very first time, if I would go through and clear all those, then it would re-geocode them and the, the on-geocode callback would write it to the record. There's other ways you could do it. You could do it fully programmatically, like not through the map, but directly through the API. And that might be in a production use case, that might be better where you sort of geocode them not for a user session, but um, you know, in, in a background batch operation or something. But uh, you get the idea that there's a there's an event to call back if it's been geocoded, and then I can I can know that it now has coordinates and and use those instead. Uh, so that that was added as well. Uh, so I you, yeah. Sorry, I wanted to say your your performance uh, remark that you just made is raising a question by somebody. Uh, they're asking. If there are any limits uh, as to usage, um, and is Google charging for some of the things that uh, that you can do with this? Right, right. Yeah, I sort of uh, breeze through that. Uh, there, there are limits. Um, the the API is free. One thing I didn't show um, also is that you need an API key. You can go to your Google uh, Developer Console to get one. I think there's some instructions on the project wiki about that. Um, and uh, you, you have to, there's a property um, to get your API key. And this is covered in, in all those other webinars I talked about, but uh, you can just bind it to a form variable or a scope variable or something. Uh, and, and I have one in there that I included. Otherwise, it, it won't show the map. So first of all, you need an API key, uh, but that's easily done. Uh, the second thing is that um, for their APIs, like the geocoding or reverse geocoding, um, they will limit the number of calls you can make. Uh, yeah, I think it's, they call it queries per second or something, uh, and they throttle it to, I don't know, 50 or six, I forget what it is. Uh, so that if you start to exceed that, then, um, then it starts returning a, you know, a bad result. And then um, fortunately, our component will, will slow down the, the, the geocode. It's, it's actually built in. It'll start to build in um, a slowdown so that, uh, it throttles the request so you don't you don't get a um in the end they'll all be geocoded it'll just uh slow it down for you so you don't get the bad result from the api and then you'd have to handle that yourself and, and do the throttling yourself but we actually put that in the component so you can give a list of 500 markers and send them to google and and they will geocode and will throttle it for you um, but the result is is that um, unless you pay uh, for um, a business license i think um, you can't geocode really quickly on demand a bunch of markers. Uh, even the, there's 90 records in the customer found set here. Even those, uh, there was a performance issue when I 
when I let it to just geocode them all at once. Um, so therefore, um, it's a good practice to um, to store the um, coordinates, latitude and longitude, uh, if you're gonna if you know that you're gonna use them again. If it's something where you you don't know it, then then yeah, you got to geocode it on demand. But hopefully, you don't have to do a big batch of them. So th there are limits there, but um, it is free and um, you can get around it by by caching it. Cool. Um, there is a question about uh, route mapping. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe I got one too. I saw lately in my Amazon app that they tell you these days uh, your driver is six stops away. You can actually see where he is. Right. You that FedEx is doing stuff like that as well. Um, don't know if you can talk about that. Yeah, sure. Um, and you might have noticed uh, on the map properties here, there is um, use uh, Google Map directions, on route changed. Uh, so there's some routing stuff there that I didn't go over. The reason is, is that um, in a prior webinar, I think it was the last webinar I did about this component, um, we had added those. And so when it's something's new, we do a webinar and, and, and we introduce it. So uh, fortunately, we have all of our webinars in our archives, and if you if you go to and I'll show the link at the end. Um, if you go to that, um, then uh, uh, <clears throat> you can watch that webinar. Uh, also, there is what I can do. I think it's example G maps. This ships with. Um, Oh, I didn't double click. There we go. Uh, there's another example solution. So the, the example solution you saw, I really did just build it this morning um, uh, in like two hours before the webinar. Um, so it is it is easy and productive to, to do this kind of stuff. Uh, but the, and I will share it um, when we post the recording, but there is a, no, it's not this one, I'm sorry. Uh, Google Maps example, must be that one. Yeah, that looks more like it. Um, let me launch that in the client. There is a, um, I get my API key, okay. Everyone close your eyes. Don't copy my API key and abuse it. Um, <clears throat> there is, uh, so that, that was a good example of what I was talking about. So, so it won't work without the API key. Um, obviously you don't wanna ask your user to plug it in. Uh, so here you can see this ships with um, with the module, so you can get this off the project site. And now you can see there's there's like a, a routing option. And, and if I, oh, let me pick um, two records here. Evo, this is about to, also you were talking about multi-select. Here it yep. goes the other way. So I, you can see that if I put um, uh, two in here and I turn on routing, it, it'll actually show the routing um, and then you can, you can get the route info um, programmatically from from the API. Um, uh, so, uh, and there's also, um, if the routing changes, there's an event for that. So there's quite some stuff about routing as well. Um, so you can look at the documentation on the project site and, and watch the prior webinar. Very cool. Um, also, uh, while we're, we're on here, um, there's, uh, if you if you needed to show, um, we're always showing like a dot or a marker for a point feature like a city, um, but if you have other geographic data um, that you wanna show, um, there's a standard for that called KML, um, uh, which is the markup language uh, for um, adding other features like, like polygons or lines. Uh, so for example, if I click this, um, this was in another webinar, you can actually see the these are the metro lines in Chicago. Um, so you can overlay stuff um, onto, onto your map as well if you wanna show other features and uh, interact with those. That's a bit more advanced, but you, you can do that uh, as well. You ready for another question? Of course. Somebody's asking about location privacy. Yeah, okay, good, yeah. Um, that, um, Location privacy, so let me, let me maybe restate the question because I think I know what, what, what you mean. Um, suppose I wanna show, uh, I don't know, I'm looking at uh, Airbnb type thing 
and they don't want to reveal the actual address, but they want to show you the neighborhood that it's in, right? Um, in that case, you might want to show a radius around something, but not actually show the, the marker itself. Um, there is, oh, it's right here. Um, there is a radius option. Um, let me just. No, it's really small. That's why. Um, yeah, we could we could programmatically zoom in on this. So so in this case, uh, I don't show the marker itself, but I show a radius around it. Um, to be fair, it is centered on <laughs> on the marker, so you could kind of guess that it's um, in the middle of the circle, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, so you're able to uh, to do some privacy stuff if you want to using the radius option. Uh, and again, all of this stuff is in the example that ships with the module that you can get off the project and and in the documentation. I should show that here if you go to um, well, I'll show it in the, the links at the end too, but if you go to, um, this is what's new in this release. Um, but if you go to the project site uh, and go to the wiki, then you get all the API documentation here and it's pretty complete. So, um, and the sample solution is in the release as well. You can download, um, if you go back to that uh, in the assets, you can always download the dot .servoy uh, example uh, there. If you're if you're brand new to this, you can also when you're when you're adding um uh, when you're adding a the the component on the map, um, you just if you don't see it here, you have to add the package. You click Add Components, and that launches the package manager, and then you can pick one of you know all the many components that that we ship that you would add to your project. Do we have uh, other questions, Ivo? No, I think I ran through most of them. I remember somebody asking about normalizing an address, but I don't know if that's a Google Maps thing or more. Oh, uh, okay. I think I think I know what that is. Um, uh, let me leave this up while we while we talk. Um, yeah, if you uh, if you maybe want to and you start entering in your address and then you you know you misspell the the street a little bit, or you call it uh, road instead of street, and it's really lane or w whatever like that. So they have address uh, validation and scrubbing uh, API. There's there's others other than Google that do that. Um, those are different APIs. They don't go through the Maps component. Um, so um, yeah, if you want to um, shoot me an email um, or post on the forum, uh, that would be more ideal on forumbestservoid.com. There's a there's a uh, a forum thread for this that goes on and on back to the beginning of the series. And if you want to post your feedback and your questions there, um, we can talk about uh, address scrubbing and address validation. Because that's a, that's a really nice feature when people start to enter, you know, an address and then um, you want to make sure they got it right. So then after they enter it, you scrub it and show it back to them. That's a really common thing in business applications. Evo, I'm going to skip all the the slide overview, but I'll I'll post it in the um. It basically goes over everything we saw, um, but we're getting long on time here, and it really just goes over um, and some of the things we didn't see. Maybe I should go over it real quick. Um, so uh, I talked about marker ID. The title goes in the tooltip. We went over animation. Um, you can say that a that a marker is not draggable. They're draggable by default. No, they're not. I had to set it to draggable. Uh, that was in that that set marker thing. So you say marker dot draggable equals true, and then then you can drag it. Otherwise, it drags the um, the map. Um, so oh, I switch solutions now. Um, uh, otherwise, it it drags the map instead of the marker. Um, so you want to make that distinction when you're making the marker and adding it to the map. Uh, it's just one single property. Uh, we added the opacity. We saw that. I was changing it when they selected it. I put it to fully opaque. Uh, I didn't show this, but you can also show and hide markers. So if you want to, if you want to not show them but still leave them on the map, it's really convenient because you don't want to re-add it. You want to just kind of fetch the marker and turn it off, and then later fetch it again and turn it on. Um, Z index uh, is just which markers show on top. That's nice when you have a cluster of them sitting together. Uh, you maybe want to put the marker that was selected on top or something like that. Uh, I had this in the example, but I didn't show it. 
Um, <clears throat> maybe I'll do this real quick. Um, so if I go to my set markers um, method here, um, I have to open this in script editor. Um, if I if I go to this, so so this was I set it to draggable true. If I turn this off, then you can't drag the marker anymore. It will pan the map instead. Um, so you do want to set that. I forgot to. Uh, point that out. Um, I was talking about um, the, oh, this is zoom control is always in my way. Sorry. <laughs> um, the icon media, I missed that. So that was here. Um, and I commented this out, hoping to remind myself to go back over it. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to save that um, and go here. Ah, now it's broken again. Uh, all I have to do is uh, relaunch it and it'll, it'll redrop the pins. Now the pins are little servoy icons and when I click them, they turn opaque and bounce. So um, you, can, uh, you can bring media into your project. So you can see that I brought in the servoy marker and that here I use the, um, the media URL for that. So if you have uh, icons, you just put them in your project and reference them and you can, you can change the marker. Um, so that's kind of fun. Um, and the other uh, property that I was talking about was, um, oh, that was that was the one. Uh, the uh, events we added, um, there's a bunch of them. Uh, I showed you click and I showed you drag end, but they're, they're really the low level events that are actually in the Google API. Um, so there's um, all the click events plus the individual mouse components that might make that up, like up, down, then click. Um, we have mouse over and mouse out. Um, <clears throat> uh, so um, you could you could do things if they mouse over a marker, um, for example. Um, and then the drag, start, drag, end, um, and while they're dragging. Uh, and those are just some of the events. There's even more. A lot of them have to do with like property changes, which might not be that useful because mostly you're changing the properties from your own code anyway, but you never know. Uh, so it's nice to know that if any of those properties changes like on Z index change or whatever, you, you can get a callback for that and handle it. Uh, so um, we support everything that, that the API supports. Uh, the events are, are nearly identical for the map events, especially the, the mouse and click events uh, and drag events. So if you want to change the map drag event to something other than panning, you could, you could do it. Uh, it could be that you're trying to draw a line on the map and you want to handle the drag event. The click event, instead of um, uh, the normal click, you could, um, uh, you could add a point to your map and then add a new record to your, your found set. So um, this really exposes the API and you can get busy with it. And there's a lot of the map change events too. I think there's even more map events than marker events. So uh, those are all in the little drop down in the properties when you're, when you're adding listeners for those events. I talked about the geocode callback. Uh, so I think, I think that covers everything. Uh, so I'll just leave these up, and if there's any last few questions, we'll take them, but we should probably wrap up. No, there's a lot of remarks. Great demo, great features, nice components. Awesome. Uh, again, the recording's posted at the, um, uh, the tech series homepage. Uh, I will push out notifications when it's available, probably later today. Uh, on the forum, on the IDE notifications, and on our social channels. Um, uh, the, I showed you the homepage for the component. Um, there's wiki documentation there, also the example solution, the second one that I showed. Uh, when I post the recording, I'll also post the, the sample that I used, which is much smaller, but focused on what's new. Um, and uh, of course, if you have any feedback, please, please put it on the forum. Uh, we'd like to get your feedback, good, bad, or otherwise. Uh, and, and your questions there so everyone can benefit. Cool. Fantastic job as always, uh, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. All right. Have a good day.